All right, I got it. Okay, I'm glad you guys are here. Um, whether you are watching live or whether you are yeah, um, it off so I can listen. watching. Um, All right, well, I guess I'll. I can ever, oh, there we go. <laughs> whether you're watching after the fact. So I want to just take probably, I'm going to say 20 minutes. I hope to leave, keep it about 20 minutes today. And I'm going to talk about how to sell and recruit people of each gen generation. The reason why I even have this information is because this is one of the things I was going to talk about at convention, but I just didn't think I had 30 minutes worth of of stuff. Well, the more I've gotten into it, I found there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of, of interesting facts. So I'm going to share my screen and I made a little PowerPoint. It is nothing fancy. So you all do not um, make fun of my, my um, minimalist PowerPoints because that's what I make. All right. So, oh shoot, let me, let me do a little I need to um, hold on just a minute. Oh, there we go. I need to pull up my notes as well. So, okay. So I'm going to have to leave it like this. And um, uh, the where you can see everything just because I need to look at my notes too so I don't miss anything. So first of all, Here's what, here's what I'm talking about, selling to the generations, but you need to know who, what generation is what and who is who. Okay, so this slide right here, is tell, it tells you what is considered Gen Z, millennial, Gen X, boomer. There's a lot of boomers, tons of boomers. Okay, so pick yourself out of there and figure out which one you are. I am Gen, Gen Z, just kidding totally Gen X, um, but uh, it, the, the way we relate to each generation and the way they relate to sales and to people who are recruiting them is, is fascinating. So let's look at boomers, okay? So first, here's the funny thing. Um, boomers make up $2.6 trillion in spending power. And by 2030, all of them are going to be over 65. But marketers spend less time appealing to boomers than they do millennials. Since they grew up without the internet, you would think that boomers would prefer to shop in the store rather than online, but the data shows otherwise. There's a study by Oracle NetSuite um, that found that 27% of boomers found the current brick and mortar retail environment inviting, while Visa says that roughly 40% of credit spending for its customers aged 60 to 69 is conducted online. Who would have thought that? I mean, I would think that that age group, I would think they're going to the store and getting their things. Did the pandemic change it? Maybe. I don't know, but that's the facts now, and, and that's been since 2021. Um, another study by Deloitte has found that 53% um, of boomers prefer shopping online over in physical stores. Who would have thought it? Okay, so that's important for us. Okay, it's estimated that 82.3% of boomers have a social media presence, and that's important to bear in mind when you're talking about a sales strategy for that generation. The most popular hub for boomers, and this is going to be no surprise, is Facebook. It's wide margin. There are actually more Facebook users age 55 and above than users that are 13 to 24. So you know how your kids always say Facebook is for old people? It really is. Not just not just for old people, but that's there are more people who are under or over the age of 55 than there are under 24 on Facebook which is kind of interesting. Okay, so when you're talking about reaching boomers, you need to have a solid Facebook presence. And that means setting up a Facebook page for your business and inviting them to it. You have to give them a way to interact with you over that channel, whatever it is, whatever your um, uh, Facebook way of communicating is you have to give them a way to interact with them and they want you to engage with them. So let's say we have some people that are um, 
Herbal Alchemy ambassadors that are over 60. They are doing awesome. And we don't need to overlook them. We need to say, hey, these, this is a group of people. When you go to Walmart, who is standing at the door? It's always somebody who's older who is greeting you. That says that those people need extra income. Okay, they have all this buying power, $2.6 trillion in spending power, okay? Those people, do not overlook them as far as customers or ambassadors. They have the spending power. They have the money to purchase their, their business kit. They have the money. They have the contacts, years and years worth of contacts of people to, to draw from. So do not overlook the, the baby boomers. They're a great, and, and honestly, the peop, there's a couple of people who are in this company who are in that, in that age group. They have interpersonal skills that a lot of us will never have because they, they've spent their life without, the majority of their life, without the internet, without, they know how to interact and they know how to talk to people. And it, it's a lost art in a lot of ways. So don't overlook the boomers, okay? Next, let's talk about Gen X. All right, so of all the generations um, that we're talking about, Gen X, born between 1965 and 1979, they get the least attention, which is funny. We always hear about boomers and millennials, but we rarely hear a whole lot about Gen X. That's people from their late 30s to 50s, okay? They tend to be in their highest earning years, which is funny that they're not, that people aren't marketing to them more, okay? Like they're like, they're just totally kind of glossed over. So the funny part about that is too, that they have a lot of decision power. They have a lot of um, people in that age group. They're in their highest earning years. They make big decisions. Like a lot of big life decisions come between 39 and your mid to late fifties. Okay. According to a study by Tap by Generation X is more down to earth than most of the other generations. They value sincerity and authenticity more than social clout. And in turn, they look for a product quality over trendiness. So they're looking for products that are going to last and they're going to pay premium to get something that is good quality. I, it, that's interesting to me. Because I, I kind of, that's kind of how I am. So, and I'm in that generation. <laughs> so their media consumption is in keeping with their generational placement between boomers and millenni millennials, meaning that they actively engage with both new and traditional media. So they're watching TV and they're also on social media. Okay. They're listening to the radio and they're also on social media. All right. They're a generation that will consistently watch TV and leverage digital devices. Both. Okay. You can reach them anywhere. Okay. You can reach them. Um, if you did a TV commercial, which we're not going to do that, you can reach, you can reach Gen Xers. Um, uh, if you get on fa Facebook, you can reach them. Instagram, you can reach them. Okay. They're also a lot more loyal to their preferred brands than millennials. Um, according to a 2018 study, 67% of Gen Xers said that when they find a product they like, they'll consistently buy it over and over again. I do that. So what does this mean for you as far as a Gen X sales strategy? So first and foremost, you can't overlook them, okay? The, they're kind of the forgotten generation, but they have tremendous financial sway. They're accessible to reach, but tough to register with. Their upbringing and the context of their young adulthood has made them skeptical about a lot of things, okay? So with Gen Xers, it's about trust. You have to give you have to give them particularly compelling value propositions and you have to get the, gain their trust and they'll be loyal to you. Okay. Super, super important to know these things are, these things are, I think, very interesting. Okay. Let's talk about the millennials. Um, they get all the attention. Okay, if Gen X is the forgotten generation, the millennials are whatever the opposite of that is. Okay, so like they're the always remembered generation or the much paid attention 
to generation. They overtook boomers as the largest generation in history in 2019. And Accenture estimates that the millennials purchasing power will reach 1.4 trillion in uh, 2022. That's a figure that will probably rise throughout their career development. They're socially conscious and they're receptive to brands that fit that bill as well. So um, you can reach them by talking about sustainable packaging and that kind of thing because they're they're about the environment they're about people they're about um things that are socially right okay so companies that demonstrate sustainable production and distribution super popular with millennials and also it might go without saying too that they're a lot more active on social media than the generations that came before them so um, that trend informs their buying patterns in a big way, namely how they research before they buy. A Nielsen study found that they're significantly more likely to conduct an online search than the broader population when shopping for common items such as food or cleaning products. Another in interesting trend among millennial consumers has to do with their perception of deals and promotions. So, um, generational preferences when purchasing products that are sold at a low cost like packaged food and toiletries found that millennials spend less on products marketed as being on promotion or on sale than the average household. Instead, they prefer shopping at outlets that consistently sell low price goods, not ones that do flash deals. I, why is that? I don't know. Okay, they want to know first and foremost that they're getting a solid product from a company that they feel good about purchasing from. So reputation of the company is very important to millennials. They'll look at your product and company identity before they consider your deals or your price tag. Interesting. If you want to appeal to millennials, lead with the merit of your product or service. Make sure that your online presence affirms that your co company is reliable, sensible, and ethical. Okay, and do what you can to garner frequent positive reviews from other companies, uh, other customers, because millennials read reviews. I do too. So, you know, I can't say anything about that, but they go by customer reviews. So when you're getting, when you're talking to your customers, get them to, to give you good reviews. And then when you're talking to millennials about the business opportunity, talk about sustainable packaging, talk about um, the fact that we fight human trafficking. There's so many things about um, herbal alchemy that will be attractive to them. Think about those things that are reliable, sensible, ethical, and sustainable. Okay. So lastly, Gen Z. All right. These are the youngsters, the youngins. All right. And they have been brought up by technology. Their perception of the world has been shaped by social media. They've always had immediate access to information, mobile devices, and they're they're more they're more in tune with the internet than any other generation. Like it's innate to them. Like most of us know with our kids, you know, you can hand them a phone and they can do whatever we can't do. It's just it it just makes sense to them naturally. 74% of Gen Zers say they spend their free time online. So that's where you're going to find them. But where to reach them isn't the question, it's how. Okay. It's easy to look at figures about Gen Zers internet usage and assume that prioritizing e commerce is the best way to sell to them. But that's not always the case. According to a study by IBM, um, Generation Z prefers shopping at brick and mortar stores but the best touch point between you and them is still over the internet. So while they might prefer to purchase products in person, they still rely on consumer reviews, customer reviews, recommendations from friends and family, and social media to influence their decisions. So they're going to research it, and then they're going to go touch it, feel it, look at it, buy it. All right. What does that mean for us? When you're talking to Gen Zers, you need to impress upon them that they can do this business from anywhere they are from their phone they've already got the the um, business plan because they already know all about technology so talk to them about how they can build from their um, phones how that 
that the products are high quality. And I mean, we have the perfect business for every one of these generations, guys. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, we have the perfect bit business for every one of these um, age groups. Honestly, it's fascinating to me that we all have such a different um, way of looking at things and the way of viewing products and business and the world for that matter. So I hope this helps you when you're talking to people to think, okay, this person is this generation. So here's what I need to, to focus on. I hope that helps. And if y'all have any questions, I'm glad to answer them. We, we're, we're doing really good on time. We are. And this is so interesting. I, as you were going through all of these, I was sitting there thinking, oh yeah, that describes me. Oh yeah. That describes my siblings. <laughs> I know. Isn't that funny though? Isn't it funny that, that how we grew up and how our, our generate that period of time that we were born in, it does influence how we see things. It's, it's really fascinating. It absolutely does. And I think that it also, as we take this training to really implement it into our business, I think it's important because a lot of us are doing social media things. And so I think as we create specific pieces of social media content, you can create a piece specifically directed at a generation and then create a different piece that's, you know, directed at another generation. And that's okay. That's, that's a great way to work your business is to think, yeah. okay, now I'm going to be talking to Gen X in this, in this video, I'm going to be, you know, building trust. I'm going to be showing the value. I'm going to, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And then this next one, I'm going to be directing more towards millennials you know, or the boomers or whatever it might be. I think that this is so insightful, Beth. So thank you so much because it can really help us as we're creating content, putting out posts, we can really use that to our advantage of who we're reaching. I agree. I think a lot of times we think, okay, I'm going to reach the mamas. I'm going to reach the, the single ladies. I'm going to reach the people who need extra income. But if you think about it, Every person is in, in case in one of those generational things. So maybe we should add that. Maybe we should say, hey, I'm going to make this post to the boomers today. Hey, if you are um, almost to retirement age or if you are, you know, why not? Why not add that to your repertoire of, of posts and just see what comes of it? And I think it's also important as we're talking about this is to you, whatever generation you are in, use that to your advantage. You know yourself, you know, the people that are in your yeah. generation and they're, let me tell you, if you just focus on your generation, that's it. You don't speak to any of these other generations. You will have a thriving business because I there are plenty of people that have money to buy our products or join our, or join our company in your generation alone. So you can really hone in on that magical, you know, um, information you already hold because that's your generation. Yeah, we're seeing that. We're seeing that in herbal alchemy with some of these young girls who are coming on and they're bringing on people who are, that's their niche. That It's young influencer type people. So there's nothing wrong with that. If that's who you have sway over, pull them in. Does anybody have any questions? All right. Well, I appreciate you guys. And I hope that this has been beneficial for you. And Sam, I assume you're going to, you're going to get this rolling for us. <laughs>